When Hillary Clinton smeared Tulsi Gabbard, she also lumped Jill Stein in with that attack. Now, um, Jill Stein recently appeared on CNN, and she had what I think is a brilliant response to this because even if you don't trust Jill Stein and you're worried about Russia propping up some sort of Manchurian candidate, Jill Stein has a response that addresses your worries. Um, it's just a matter of, will you actually take what she says seriously and fight for a solution to this problem? This is what she had to say. Dr. Stein, I went to Miriam Webster, looked up asset just to be sure. Here's what it says. Something useful in an effort to foil or defeat an enemy such as a piece of military equipment or a spy. Are you a Russian spy? <laughs> no, I am not a Russian spy. I think this is a completely unhinged conspiracy theory for which there is absolutely no basis in fact, not for myself and not for Tulsi Gabbard. I think it's, it's really outrageous that Hillary Clinton is trying to promote this crazy idea. You know, you can't just slander people. You have to present some basis in fact. Uh, Hill, uh, uh, Tulsi has said that she is dedicated to running as a Green, as a, a Democrat, and she has been for her whole life, so that's pretty believable. I am not running for office. Somehow Hillary Clinton didn't do her, her Google research, or she would know that I am not running. Uh, so it's preposterous to say if I will give it up. Um, you know, this is just a, it's a wild and insulting theory, and I think it speaks to Hillary's need to try to explain, perhaps to herself, you know, why her campaign was not successful. People really wanted change and unfortunately believed Donald Trump's lies that he was going to bring change. We need a voting system, you know, in which people can actually vote for what they want. And if people are concerned that uh, independent candidates and campaigns are Russian plots, there's a very simple solution. Ranked choice voting prevents any evil foreign asset or anyone from splitting the vote. It lets you rank your choices. You never have to worry about your vote being, quote, thrown away or your, um, uh, your vote not counting or spoiling the election. It doesn't happen under ranked choice voting. If your first choice loses, your vote is automatically reassigned to your second choice. It's a win-win. And, you know, that's the solution here. The solution is not to silence political dissent. You know, the basis of our democracy is supposed to be political dialogue and competition. We shouldn't be in the business of, of um, you know, throwing uh, just terrible accusations and calling tyranny and, and traitor uh, for people who are standing up for very important values that the American people badly need to hear about. You know, 70% in a recent Wall Street Journal poll, 70% of Americans said they're not just fed up, they are fighting angry with a political establishment that's thrown them under the bus. So we shouldn't be in the business you, of silencing uh, diverse political choices. We need ranked choice voting to make that okay and bring our values back into our vote. So first of all, she denounces Hillary Clinton's attack. She calls it an unhinged conspiracy theory. And she points out the obvious that Tulsi Gabbard has already ruled out that she's not going to be running in a third party. Um, furthermore, Jill Stein isn't running for president in 2020. She's not running for office in 2020. So for Hillary Clinton to say that, I mean, there is truly no basis in reality for that criticism. There's zero link between Tulsi Gabbard and Vladimir Putin. Zero. I mean, the only thing that they have to go on is that Tulsi Gabbard is against regime change war in Syria and Bashar al-Assad is an ally with uh, Vladimir Putin and the Russian government. But that's it. That is a connection that isn't even tenuous. It's non-existent. I am against regime change war in Syria. So you can't just say that she's a Russian asset based on her view on geopolitics in the Middle East, that doesn't even make any sense. It's a conspiracy theory. So Jill Stein is right to call that out. There's absolutely no merit there. However, when it comes to Jill Stein, a lot of people in the Democratic Party 
are incredibly skeptical of her because of that now infamous 2015 photo when she appeared at a dinner that included Vladimir Putin. Now, she explained that this was a conference RT invited her to and that she paid for her own trip. And, you know, of course, she never concocted some type of malicious scheme with Vladimir Putin to quote unquote steal the election from Hillary Clinton. But the reason why I think that Jill Stein's response in this interview is so brilliant is because it accounts for people's skepticism. Like, if you don't trust Jill Stein, she's still nonetheless offering you a solution. Now, look, I understand, like, to be fair, that the optics of that photo are bad, right? If it were me and I were in Jill Stein's position and I showed up to that dinner and Vladimir Putin was there, I would have left in protest, right? To make a statement about human rights. That was around the time when Russia had just passed their, uh, what was it, like a gay propaganda law, which essentially banned advocacy for LGBTQ rights. So I would have left in protest. However, to be fair to Jill Stein, the reason why she attended that, knowing that there would be some pretty awful people there, is because she wanted to be a voice that would speak truth to power, that would actually be able to stand up for human rights. But I mean, regardless, if people are concerned, there's a very simple solution. Ranked choice voting. If you are worried that a third party candidate is going to run deliberately at the behest of Vladimir Putin to prop up whatever candidate the Russian government is supporting. If that's really your concern, this is the solution. Join me in advocating for ranked choice voting. But the problem is that a lot of people, they worry about third-party spoilers and whatnot, but they never talk about ranked choice voting, and it's incredibly frustrating to me. I have advocated for ranked choice voting now for years on this program. Nobody, even the people who are the most vocal about, you know, Jill Stein and whatever impact she had in the 2016 election, they never mention ranked choice voting. Members in the Democratic Party who are the loudest in saying that, you know, Jill Stein spoiled the election and handed it over to Donald Trump, even if Gary Johnson took more votes away from Donald Trump, mind you. They never say anything about this. And there's a bill in Congress that was introduced by Donald Beyer. This is H.R. 4000, and it would institute nationwide ranked choice voting. But can you guess how many co-sponsors it has? It has five co-sponsors. That's it. So everyone is worried about, you know, a Manchurian candidate, we're worried about third-party candidates, not very many people are advocating for ranked choice voting. Ro Khanna co-sponsored that bill. Jamie Raskin co-sponsored that bill. But this was formerly H.R. 3057 back in the 2017 to 2018 congressional session. Can you guess how many co-sponsors it had back then? Once again, five. Five. Now, at a town hall, I showed up and I asked my representative if she'd actually co-sponsored this legislation. She said she'd look into it. Guess what? She never did. So everyone is super concerned about, you know, third-party candidates potentially spoiling the election, third-party candidates potentially being Manchurian candidates running at the behest of Vladimir Putin, propped up by the Kremlin, but nobody wants to actually opt for meaningful yet easy electoral reform. I mean, the thing about ranked choice voting is this opens the door to third parties and fourth parties actually becoming electorally viable because there are, make no mistake about it, dozens of parties that exist in the United States. It's just a matter of whether or not they're viable. But here's the thing. The reason why Democrats and Republicans don't support ranked choice voting is because this is a direct threat to their power. If you start opening the door to a more fair electoral process, and you allow members of the Green Party and potentially the Libertarian Party or some other parties to start getting elected, then of course that threatens your power status. So they want to complain about third party candidates, but at the same time, they don't want a solution to stop vote splitting. Okay, well then you can't complain. You see what the Democratic Party likes to do is they like to voter shame people, right? If you don't fall in line and support whoever corporatists we nominate, then we're just going to voter shame you. Rather than opting for a true solution that would ameliorate all of our concerns, we're just going to beat you over the head and tell you to fall in line. You have to change, not us.
I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. When it comes to elections, these are winner take all. This is a zero sum game. There's going to be one winner and one loser. So that means that you have to make a decision. Either you support the person who you think has the best chance of winning, or you vote sincerely for the person who you genuinely believe in. Now, look, in 2016, I voted for Jill Stein, proudly so, but I am in the state of Oregon. So as much as I hate the electoral college, I still use it to my advantage in a safe blue state to vote for someone who I sincerely believe in. Now, if I were in a swing state or if Oregon looked like it was going to go to Donald Trump, of course, I would vote for Hillary Clinton in order to prevent Donald Trump because defeating Donald Trump was a greater priority to me than voting sincerely for a Green Party candidate. But I mean, none of this would even matter if we just had ranked choice voting. So the fact that Jill Stein brought that up is, I think, brilliant because even if you hate Jill Stein or you hate anyone who runs in third party, you can advocate for ranked choice voting and whatever fear you have about third parties would be wiped away. But nobody talks about ranked choice voting. So um, it's incredibly frustrating that we continue to, you know, look down upon third parties, even if we live in a two party system and Duvergier's law is still something that is active. I mean, third parties, they're part of democracy, regardless if you like it or not. They're going to exist. They've always existed and they will continue to exist. It's just a matter of are we going to maybe open the door to allowing them to win by loosening that stranglehold that, you know, our majoritarian winner take all single member district plurality system has? Or are we going to just, you know, keep complaining and beating people over the heads if they don't fall in line? You know, I think the answer is clear. But look, if you care about democracy and you don't want a Manjurian candidate, you know, whatever potential a spoiler to emerge, advocate for ranked choice voting. You can advocate to get that on the ballot in your state. You can call your representative and tell him or her to co-sponsor HR 4000. Either way, if you're not talking about ranked choice voting, then I don't take you seriously if you truly are concerned about, you know, a Manchurian candidate, because we can stop that. We can stop that with ranked choice voting. Period. End of story. Subscribe if you like this video, folks. Mike's tremendous, and he's doing a really, really good job. Many people are telling me about how wonderful the Humanist Report is. Bigly.